Okay, so I wanted to take a step back and look at the Schrodinger equation again and kind of look at something we've been doing that I haven't really talked about. And what we've been doing is expanding our state ket in terms of the eigenstates of the Hamiltonian. So, for example, in the problems we've been doing, we had our state ket expanded in terms of these SC eigenkets, and then our Hamiltonian has just been proportional to the SC operator. And since the Hamiltonian is proportional to the SC operator, the eigenstates of the Hamiltonian are just going to be the eigenstates of the SC operator, so these states. And we can see that they are uh, that these states are also eigenstates of the Hamiltonian by just acting the Hamiltonian on the uh, plus state, for example. So this is minus gamma B S C, and we get an h bar over two. And so we can call this value B e plus. And so this tells me that my plus state is an eigenstate of my Hamiltonian with eigenvalue E plus. So um, the, what is the advantage, or why, why has that been useful? Why have we been doing that? Well, the right side of this equation becomes extremely easy to evaluate once we've expanded our state cats in terms of the eigenstates of the Hamiltonian, because we know how an, any operator acts on its eigenstates. So if we have h acting on psi here, this will just be h acting on this linear combination. And I just, this is equivalent to just multiplying the corresponding ket by the corresponding eigenvalue. Or even more simply, we can just use the time evolution operator, which again relies on me expanding my state in terms of the eigenkets of the Hamiltonian, because then I know that I can just replace this Hamiltonian operator when I multiply it through on each of these terms with the corresponding eigenvalue and just solve my problem in one line, basically. So having our state cat expanded in terms of the eigenstates of the Hamiltonian makes our problem pretty much trivial to solve. We don't really have to do much of anything. And uh, in most quantum mechanical problems, the problem isn't you know solving the Schrodinger equation because once you've done this expansion, solving the Schrodinger equation is pretty easy. The problem that we'll face is that we won't initially know what the eigenstates of the Hamiltonian are. So if we don't know that, then there's no way for us to do any of this. We can't, we don't know how our time evolution operator acts on some basis that isn't the, uh, you know, eigenbasis of that operator. So the thing that we need to do is find first in a problem, the eigenstates of the Hamiltonian. So generally what we'll do is we'll uh, write or represent our Hamiltonian as a matrix in some basis, and then we will uh, find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of that matrix just using you know, linear algebra. Hopefully you've seen that before, just finding the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of a matrix, but I'm about to work an example, so I'll at least refresh your memory. Or equivalently, equivalently the uh, term is called diagonalizing the matrix. And the reason it's called diagonalizing is if I represent a matrix in a basis that is not its uh, a basis of its eigenvectors, so for example here I have this Hamiltonian um, where with my magnetic field along the x direction. And in that case, if I represent this operator in the SC basis, we already know that this is what it looks like. And we see that this matrix is not diagonal. So that's actually immediately how we can tell that this that our SC basis is not the eigenbasis of our Hamiltonian. And which we already knew, but uh, you know, in general, if you weren't sure, this is how you could tell immediately. And uh, so when we switch, when we represent this operator in a basis of its own eigenkets, it will become diagonal. So for example, the SC operator, remember, it represented in the SC basis is 1, 0, 0, negative 1. So it's diagonal. So uh, I want to look at the problem we looked at last time, which is we have our uh, magnetic field in the x direction. And we solved this problem before 
by, you know, we had our initial state expanded in terms of the SC cats. And what we did is we said, okay, well, let's rewrite our SC cats in terms of the SX cats. Because once we do that, uh, well, we know that the SX cats are eigenstates of the Hamiltonian. So then we can do, you know, apply our time evolution operator or solve the Schrodinger equation, whatever we want to do. But in that case, we, we knew ahead of time. So we had our state expanded in a basis that wasn't the eigenbasis of the Hamiltonian, but we did know what the, the eigenstates of the Hamiltonian were in terms of our, uh, our basis vectors. So we could just convert. So let's pretend we didn't know what combination, what linear combination of our state vectors, our basis, our SZ vectors, were eigenstates of this Hamiltonian. How would we find what the eigenstates were? So all we have to do is compute the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of this matrix. So I'll go through that here. So the first thing we do is we construct this matrix, this H minus E times I, where I is the identity operator. So that will, so this is H, this is E times I. And if we subtract these things, we get this. And then what we do is we take the determinant of this thing and we get, this is just minus e times minus e, so z squared, minus this times this, which is minus this. And we set that equal to zero. And this will give us our eigenvalues. So in this equation, e is kind of, it's an unknown. And once we set this determinant equal to zero, we get this quadratic equation for e. So this tells us what our eigenvalues are. So we get e equals plus and minus gamma b h bar over two. And using this, these, we can find our eigenvectors. So the way we do that is we take this matrix and we apply it, and we, well, we plug in each of these eigenvalues and apply it to this general eigen, uh, vector here, A and B. And if A and B is an eigenvector, then we should get zero, zero. So we can use that to solve for what our eigenvector is. So instead of writing, you know, gamma b h bar over two everywhere, I'm just going to write e. So our matrix will become minus e for the case of e equals, you know, plus gamma b h bar over two. We get just minus e's everywhere in this matrix. And if we write out the two equations, this gives us this tells us that uh, minus e a minus e b equals zero, and we get the same equation twice. So we get that a is equal to minus b, so we can we know that our uh, the representation of our eigenstate will look like this, a and minus a. And at first you might say, well, okay, we need one more equation because we don't know what our eigenvector is yet. We just have it in terms of this, uh, you know, variable a here. But this is all we need to uh, determine our state. So all we need is the, remember our states, we only need the relative values of these two coefficients and their uh, absolute value is determined by the normalization. So we need the magnitude of a squared plus the magnitude of minus a squared, which is also just a squared equal to one. And so a must be one over the square root of two. And so that tells us that our eigenvector in this case, corresponding to this eigenvalue, is 1 over the square root of 2 uh, plus minus the minus k. And we can just recognize this as sx minus. So we get what we expected. Uh, our, one of our eigenvectors of this Hamiltonian is just the sx k. And similarly, if we take this thing and we plug in the uh, minus value, we get this matrix. And this tells us that a equals b. So that just tells us that our, our uh, basis state is a, an equal linear combination of our two uh, original basis vectors. And of course, this is sx plus. So, um, OK, so what we did is we had this Hamiltonian, and we had it expanded or represented in terms of a basis that we knew wasn't its eigenbasis because that basis didn't give us a diagonal representation of this uh, matrix. So we found the eigenvectors of this operator 
by uh, just the usual linear algebraic methods, and they gave us what we expected. The, uh, the eigenstates are just the sx plus and minus kets, as they should be, because our Hamiltonian is just proportional to the spin x operator. 